Hi, and thank you so much for coming in for this, Bronte. My name is Laura Brody. I'm the founder of Opulent Mobility. I'm living on Tongva land, and I am a middle-aged white woman with brown hair sitting in front of a very full bookshelf. I'm so glad you could be here. Thank you so much for having me. Do you remember when you first got involved with Opulent Mobility? I don't remember. I, I think it was 2021. I think you're right. I think it was 2021. What drew you to it, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, it was the the mission behind it, the the, the purpose of it, that it is highlighting disabled artists and not yeah. in the typical medicalized or infantilized way. It is truly honoring and exhibiting disabled artists for their artwork and giving them a space to have their artwork be appreciated. I'm so glad because um, yes, absolutely. This is what I want. And I'm so glad you were able to be part of it. Bronte's photography, by the way, is stunning. And um, so many fabulous details. How did you get into photography? So I actually, got, I've been taking pictures probably, I, I as far back as I can remember, I remember being like a little kid with a disposable Kodak camera and dressing Neat. up my poor, I had pet ducks and putting outfits on them That's and doing like, and doing like Anne Getty's style shoots with my ducks. They were very, very tame. Um, That's so adorable. I, I never really, other than that, I never really did anything with it aside from basically doing photography of the paintings that I was doing because before getting into photography, I was a realist painter. Oh. And uh, my disabilities got to the point uh, where I wasn't able to sit at an easel anymore and paint mm. that by the, I'd basically get a palette set up and then not have any energy to paint. Mm. Um, so I was like, I have to do something. And so I ended up doing a photo shoot of a friend of mine and it just Neat. kind of clicked. And I was like, okay, I can do this. I can add all the symbolism. I can, because I was already doing yeah. reference photos for my photography. I was taking my own reference photos. Okay. Um, and because I think that's the ethical way for artists to, rather than sourcing off of the internet or anything like that, that if you are the one taking the picture, you can use your own picture. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And so... You know, I'd, I'd already, you know, that had the equipment and I, you know, once I realized and I made the connection like, oh, I can utilize all of these other skill sets I have from hair and makeup, costume making, uh, prop making, all of these things that I had done in other aspects, either professionally, um, because I used to do set design um, and hair and makeup professionally. Uh, special effects. Um, and so I was like, I can add all of these things into this. And it just was like, this kind of like, oh yeah, why wasn't I doing this sooner? And so I just kind of ran with it. And I, it, it's always been kind of, what can I make under $10? <laughs> <laughs> I've always given myself like a really tiny budget like I, I've never really had a big budget but like I was like okay ten dollars what can I make <laughs> yeah well I think the devourer really exemplifies that Thank you were telling you, yeah. me some you were doing something you were telling me about the glitter yes that I basically figured out a way of not having glitter transfer in the in in, in the process that I have mastered this is impressive <laughs> yeah <laughs> to the point where like I because and I was dealing with the same kind that really fine stuff that just gets everywhere and sticks to everything ah. and it's just like seal it seal it seal it and if you think you're done sealing it you're not <laughs> seal it again <laughs> yes we used to call it glurpees because yeah. it's completely contagious and it never ever goes away 
it never does. <laughs> I, I, and I learned my lesson because I made a costume. I think it was in 2013 where I was a fire sorceress and I had done this like gl red glitter headpiece and my, and I made it in my sister's apartment. And to this day, to this day, she's moved like oh, six no. times, six times since that apartment. And she still <laughs> finds red glitter. <laughs> like, what is this thing? It never <laughs> dies. <laughs> oh, wow. But really such stunning work. I love Thank that. Um, what, it, it makes so much sense to me that you have a background in theatrical and in, in stage makeup and in scenic because so many of your pieces are very painterly and I can see uh, the elements, those kind of theatrical elements, which really make them stand out and quite beautiful, even when you're talking about very difficult topics. Thank you. Yeah, that was the, that was really what I wanted to do is because I wanted to do something in the same way that, you know, kind of the, the old masters did where you had yeah. these really kind of gruesome paintings but they were also really beautiful and so you know you have like you know a, a famous painting of you know someone being beheaded and I think everybody anybody that's an art history buff knows exactly what painting I'm talking about yeah but it's so beautiful <laughs> it's like gorgeously done and yes. beautiful robes and you know that positions just so Exactly. And so I wanted, I, I wanted that kind of nice. old, that feel, even if it, even if the colors were vibrant, even if, uh, you know, it had a more modern look to it, I still wanted this kind of veneer of beauty. Mm. And then that once that's peeled back, the subject matter is really apparent. What are you working on now? Because you were talking to me before we started recording. That just sounds like an amazing project. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm currently working on a short film. Neat. And it's for, I'm a fellow uh, for Art Lab here in Portland, Oregon. And uh, congratulations. The theme, thank you. Uh, the theme that we're working on is gift. And <laughs> So, and, and we basically, we delve into uh, Talmudic texts and Jewish teachings mm. um, and try to incorporate them into modern art practices. And so it's basically coming mm. at everything from a modern lens and how to do it from a contemporary lens. And so I, my project for this is a short film and I'm going to be incorporating Jewish folklore. It's going to be a horror movie because it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's part of what you do. Yes, it has that, that, that kind of gruesome but beautiful element to it. And, you know, I've, I've, I'm no strangers. A lot of my work has blood in it, but in a very kind of romanticized way. <laughs> yeah, an artistic way. Yes. And in order to that, you know, like you look at it and you go, oh, is that, oh my God. Yeah, that is blood. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And because and, I fully admit, like I am a goth kid through and through. I am a vampire lover. I love all of that. <laughs> and I've, yeah. I've been really wanting to do a horror film and I came up with this idea and we're running with it and hopefully uh by next year it'll be finished and i will be able to submit it to festivals and so cool i'm i'm really excited about it that's amazing how did you find out about the fellowship so i actually found out about it because when i moved to portland i was like okay i want to find is there like anything like artsy within the Jewish community here because there isn't a big one here but it's so much bigger than anywhere else I've lived so it's big to me <laughs> cool that's good and so I basically just googled and I was and I came mm -hmm. across this and it just started the right. year before I moved here 
And wow. so it's just band, brand new baby fellowship. And basically oh. I got on the email list. So that way, whenever they opened up again for if they were going to have it the next year. Um, mm-hmm. And so they opened it up. I applied and I crossed my fingers and I got in. So. <laughs> Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Because it's anytime you're moving to a new place, it's always tough. Art making can be such a lonely experience anyway. But Oh, it can be. Yeah. But I, I know that you had built up a community where you were before and then to leave that and to try to just find some place that you can be with other people and make art. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Exactly. And because like I, I had had such a beautiful disability community in Kansas city where I'd lived before. And yeah. I, I tried to look for that here in Portland and there just really wasn't that. Mm. And so that's when I was like, okay, like the, the, the independent living organization or independent living center here was really inactive. Their website was outdated. They really didn't upkeep Ooh. their social media at all. And yeah. so I was like, okay, well, if I can't find disabled community, maybe I can find community via, you know, Jewish community. Yeah. And because that was something that I hadn't even, wasn't an option for me really in the Midwest because there really isn't a lot of. No, not a lot. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's pretty barren. Um, <laughs> And, you know, like I, my partner tells me I'm the third Jew they ever met. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, there's that. Uh, so. Well, yeah. You f- try was... to find your community, what, whatever that is. Exactly. Oh, I'm just so glad that you were able to, and maybe you'll find more of the disability community with a little bit more, I don't know searching around I'm hopeful and I and I I feel like going this route with being you know wanting to make a film because I want it there will be authentic disability representation in this project that is something I'm adamant about I there will be no cripping up I'm going to find a disabled actress to play the lead role nice Um, that Perfect. that is something that I am very passionate about. And I so I feel like via that, via doing things where I am advocating throughout the process of making yeah. this, that I will find community and disability community via that standing my ground. This is what I need and what I want. And even if that means that it won't be done by next year, I, I, I yeah. to let it take me as long as it takes in order to have authentic representation. I think you're more likely to find it that way too. I mean, and you're more likely to find a community. Exactly. But because you're insisting. Yes. And, and so I'm, I'm, that's one of the multitude of reasons that I'm excited about this project because I feel like that will help bridge that that gap of, of not having been able to find that getting here and so I, I'm I'm really excited about it. That's so cool. I'm so excited for you. That's really great. Because yeah, I mean, finding your people matters. It really does. And it uh, makes a difference. When you've got a world where people are essentially screaming at each other from, yeah. across, from across the room and not even finding any way to connect, that it's... Human connection is super important. This is what it we is. need. Yeah. Connection, empathy. Yeah. It's so important. Any other photography project besides the film that you're thinking of doing? So I'm actually, I'm working on a couple of things right now. I'm Neat. also working on a narrative photography series Ooh. Um, where I will be using um, basically a kind of folk tale symbolism but jewish folktale symbolism um so i'll be making prop sets once again it, it's, it's basically the setup of a film but instead of shooting it with the, you know a video camera i'm shooting it and doing stills instead um 
And oh, neat, I'm, I've been making a sculpture that's going to act as my child in uh, the series. And so I've, I've got it mostly sculpted. I still have, I'm waiting for more funds to come in so that I can get the rest of the uh, art supplies that I need for it. But once that's done, that's kind of the main part of this series because I, the the pull of the series is that this sculpture needs to be really cute. <laughs> and you need to love it when you look at it. And so I, I was trying really okay. hard to get the sculpt right. And I feel like I got the sculpt right. <laughs> awesome. And I have it sitting on my shelf right now, just kind of waiting to have more stuff added to it. And I, I go by and I give it a little pat on the head and I'm like, soon, soon, my child. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming to me. Yes. Aw, that's so neat. So you, I love it that you plan your works out like that and that you plan them out enough in advance. Because if you're doing costumes and props and all the rest of it, you've got to do some of that. Oh, absolutely. I, I plan them. And it's something that I've kind of always done where I basically, it's almost like I'm writing a book because I'm making an outline mm -hmm. and it, it's setting up for everything that I need. So I start with each piece I need, the supplies I will need for each of those prop pieces. Um, oh. And then I go through and list what shots I want, exactly what those shots are going to look like. And cool. So you're storyboarding I, it. Oh, absolutely. And nice. I then there's, I give room in there for like, even though I have an idea in my head of what I want it to look like on shoot days, because I generally utilize models uh, for me to take mm -hmm. uh, photographs of that I, I like to use models who have some kind of acting experience because I think that's really important for yeah. what's going on. And I put a lot of trust into them that after, you know, I sit there and I explain to them hmm. what it is that I want, what feeling is needs to come across in this photograph. And then I kind of let them go with that because if it doesn't feel authentic to them, they're going to look uncomfortable on camera. So yeah. They need to be having that feeling in their own authentic way. And then mm. I, so I, I have allowances for the model to be able to express the emotion that I need to come across in their way. And so, and, I, and so I know that I'm making this very vulnerable space. And so hmm. I, I make, every time I do a shoot, I am so insistent that this person that is chosen to, to model for me, I feel so honored for them to be there because they're, they're the ones that are being vulnerable in the moment. And so I'm like, are, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Are you too cold? Are you too hot? Are you, what do you need? Do you need water? Do you need to sit mm -hmm. down? Do you need a rest? Do you need a break? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but no, it's, it's really stunning I, some of the series that you've done i mean i've been so impressed but obviously there's a really great rapport that you have with the models and that makes such a big difference um because without that i don't think you get you don't get that kind of genuine um feel it translates through the photos exactly you know? and 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 i will say that i've had i've had some shoots where uh, no one's seen the work from them because it just didn't work and yeah, sometimes and so, you know I've 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 scrapped more than I've than I've shared and yeah. and I'm, and so the, what I so you'll end up seeing some of the same models and actors over and over again in my work because they get it they're there yeah. they understand it they 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 know what I'm trying to say and it gets to the point where when they work with me they know the speed that I take pictures at. And like... Nice. <laughs> it helps a lot. Oh, I'm hoping you're finding some good models out where you are now. I haven't yet, but I am, I'm really, I have a couple in mind and who I'm excited nice. to work with. So that's great. All right. Really looking forward to seeing that. And the, the next work you have in store. So uh, keep your, Keep your eyes peeled for these film, for the yes. film and the photo series. Yes. We'll keep it. 
that's so exciting.